Welcome, families and friends, current and past faculty and trustees, to these 51st commencement exercises of Green Hills School. And will, and will, and will you all please join me in a special welcome to one of our school's founders who, along with her late husband Bill and six other Ann Arbor couples, shared and implemented their vision for Green Hills School and are the reason why we are here together today, Nan Conlon. Congratulations to you, the class of 2022, for earning the diplomas that I am honored to award you today on behalf of the Green Hills faculty, staff, and board of trustees. Much, too much of your high school experience has been like no other in the history of our school. And as such, you have most decidedly earned your diplomas in ways deserving of our accolades and admiration. You have earned them with marked curiosity, creativity, and responsible citizenship, a strong affection for each other, for your teachers, and for your school. And with what my colleagues and I agree is a fine and endearing spirit. The spirit of our facilities crew and non-teaching staff has been as indefatigable as their energy in preparing all of this for you and for us. They are the Green Hills employees who work throughout the year to make sure we have what we need for teaching, learning, eating, performing, and playing, and they deserve our recognition, not only for getting us ready for commencement's pomp and circumstance, but for providing us what we need to teach, learn, and commune. They are people I know you appreciate every day, but please join me in appreciating them one more time together. Thank you. And class of 2022, while you are still their students for another 45 minutes or so, let us all join you in acknowledging all of your exceptional teachers who have brought you to this moment and to sit on this stage who are here with you on stage left today, your teachers. And we, your teachers, need to know that we must take a moment to acknowledge and thank the people who gave you to us for this brief period in your life and who have given much in providing this opportunity for you. So graduates, please join all of us in thanking your parents. It is fitting, it's fitting that you have chosen for your commencement faculty speaker, our Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, because no class has better represented the spirit behind those three words. And I'm not speaking only of the photographs in today's program, but mostly of what is written about each of you individually. You are a startlingly and refreshingly eclectic collection of young people. Artists and athletes, scientists and writers, math whizzes and multilinguists, musicians and actors. This class left no stone unturned. Many of us have experienced this persistent, prevailing, and sometimes pernicious notion from the uninformed that there is a monolithic Green Hills student. You shatter that misconception. 
You first arrived on our campus from 49 different elementary and middle schools and almost as many neighborhoods in and surrounding Ann Arbor, wondering what Green Hills wanted you to be by the time you made it to the stage today. What happened along the way is that you embodied our mission to realize your full intellectual, ethical, artistic, and athletic potential. Simply put, you became the person you should be, which is in fact what we wanted. The fabric of your class is tightly woven by your individual strengths, personalities, cultures, and beliefs, and you take with you to college and beyond not just your own threads, but the understanding and appreciation of how a community is strongest when embracing and learning from each member's uniqueness and difference. You have learned much to prepare yourself to meet the challenge of the final words of our mission statement, to make the world a better place. And it's fair to say that the time you have spent with us in that building has been during very troubling times in the country and the world. If we define pre-adulthood as time spent prior to the age of 18, then you for certain have been witness to the strife, bitterness, and polarization in a world that has to be better politically, socially, economically, environmentally, and I should add, pandemically. Today is a celebration of you. And given what we know about you, today is also a celebration of the hope, our hope, you carry into a world that needs you. A world that needs your individual strengths, personalities, backgrounds and talents, a world that needs your humanity and your purpose. And on a personal note, I look forward to that world for my own young children, knowing that you are leading them into it. Please welcome to the risers our upper school choir, and please also silence your cell phones for the rest of today's ceremony if you have not done so already.
Is lovely. Thank you. Please join me in welcoming to the lectern the class of 2022 student speaker and class president Rukmini Nalamathu. Good morning. Um, after a long journey, we have finally arrived at the culminating event of our childhood lives, graduation day. We spent the last 13 years in schools thinking of this day, dreaming of what it would feel like to be on this stage. I guarantee that not one of us expected to feel what we are feeling right now. In a combination of nerves and excitement, sadness and hopefulness, we are sitting here in what I feel is disbelief. This end of an era reminded me of something one of our classmates said earlier this year. After our grade retreat to Cedar Point, one of our classmates stated in profound and utter disbelief, guys, we are literally seniors. <laughs> at first, the phrase was a joke. We would say it half-heartedly to poke fun at her, because in our minds, of course, we were seniors. We knew that. But then we started saying it as we submitted our last college applications, as we took our last high school exams, played in our last sports games, performed for our last time in the theater, until finally we said it on May 6th as we ended up on the soccer field after running through the halls that we called home for so long, in front of our friends and teachers that we had gotten to know so well from being a silly little catchphrase to becoming one of the most repeated sentences throughout the year, those five words summarize this disbelief and reluctance to let go. Before this year, there were always students to look up to. Most of the time, they had unattainable attributes of leadership and kindness. As a young student, those qualities seemed so perfectly and effortlessly expressed. And I would often wonder how, and if at all, I would represent those qualities myself when the time came. I think that's why we all came to the same conclusion that we didn't want to believe that we were seniors. We didn't believe that the last year had finally come, that we were supposed to be what everyone else thought was unattainable. But no matter the doubts, we stepped into that role with grace. And whether it took one, two, or all seven years of our time at Green Hills, we grew up to be the leaders the school needed to see. With the return into the building, we, task, we were tasked with the establishment, with establishing what it meant to be a student here. As many students stepped into the school for the first time, it was up to us to demonstrate how special this place can be. 
With the return into the building, we came back with resilience and optimism. We took advantage of the fleeting time that we had and became closer than ever. We did so by approaching each task with determination and passion. We led in extracurricular activities and in the classroom, gaining respect of our classmates and teachers. Throughout the year, we heard stories of our classmates and their successes on the court, stage, at competitions, or on playing fields. We were invested in the successes of each other and were proud of the accomplishments of our classmates throughout the years. But now our time is up, and we are no longer literally seniors, but we are literally high school graduates. Our duty as leaders of the school has been fulfilled with conviction and compassion. But that doesn't mean that our journey ends there. Now it is, up to take, it is up to us to take what we have learned here and use it as we go off into the world. The formative years that we have spent here being shaped into respectful people and capable people has prepared us for the rest of our lives. To our families and teachers to celebrate here with us today, I cannot think of a group of people more deserving of our gratitude. Thank you to all the parents and families for supporting us on our journeys. Another thank you goes to all the teachers who came in every single day with the willingness to push us students to be the best people that we can be. Without your support and mentorship, we wouldn't be the people standing up here today, so ready to face the world. Whenever it felt like the world was against us, your classrooms were a comfortable space to let go of it all. You supported us every day and believed in us when we didn't. And finally, to the class of 2022, to my classmates, my friends, my lab partners and teammates, to the group of kids who, I will, al who will always be the people that I went to high school with, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'm so honored that I've gotten to know you all, and everyone you meet in the future will be so fortunate to know you, because like me, they will also experience how funny, kind, accepting, and impactful you are. Thank you, to all of the, thank you for all of the memorable class trips, the free entertainment from our grade group chat the day before a snowstorm, and for teaching me what it means to be part of a loving and welcoming community. Congratulations to you all. As we go our separate ways, the bonds we formed here will be irreplaceable. In a world where everything is uncertain, one thing I know for sure is that when we see each other again, it will bring comfort and familiarity. It will feel a bit like home. Take care. Thank you, Rukmini. Chosen by the class of 2022, this year's commencement faculty speaker is history teacher, director of diversity, equity, and inclusion, and next year's interim head of middle school, Nadine Hall. Thank you, and welcome all. As Mr. Ferran said, my name is Nadine Hall, and my pronouns are she and her. Um, in addition, of course, to being the DEI director and interim middle school head, I'm also um, the parent of an alum for 2017 and a soon-to-be alum. I've been an educator at Green Hills for, I believe, about 23 years, and someone can correct me if I'm I'm not sure, but I think about 23 years. So when senior grade dean, Mr. Wicklin, came to me and told me that the class of 2022 had voted and chosen me to be their faculty speaker, I was at first ecstatic. I started thinking about how much I really like this particular class, and not just because I have a child among them, but since I do, I've been really fortunate to have a unique perspective of this class, one that's really been up close and personal, as I have happily watched them become closer, more empathetic, and certainly they've matured over the years. However, my euphoric feelings quickly turned to nervousness and worry 
because I feel I have a responsibility to deliver a memorable and motivating speech that would encourage all of you to achieve great things upon leaving Green Hills. And honestly, although I can't remember everything that was said at my high school graduation, probably due to the fact that I just couldn't wait to get started and get on that new path, I do remember feeling ready and encouraged to take those next steps. So my wish for you all is to feel ready and encouraged to take those next steps. Also, I admit, I feel a little pressure, especially since one of you, <coughs> seniors, may be judging me a little bit more than the others. And I really don't want to embarrass her. <laughs> so the more I agonized and thought about what I would say to this class of wonderful and amazing human beings, one of my favorite quotes kept coming to mind. There are years that ask questions and years that answer. And that's a quote from Zora Neale Hurston, Their Eyes Were Watching God. Wherever you began in middle school, there were questions. You had questions. So many questions. Would all your stuff fit in your locker? Would you ever find your classrooms? If you went here, you might have asked, who numbered the classrooms? And why did they make it so difficult to remember and find? <laughs> Would you be able to complete all your homework, get good grades? Would you win the geography B? Would you make that goal? Would you remember your lines? Were you and your classmates ready to present your SAP projects? <laughs> and pretty importantly, would you find friends? You had questions. So many questions. And before you knew it, you were entering your high school years, and you realized you had, you had the answer to many of those questions. Surprisingly, everything seemed to fit in those lockers and cubbies. You joined a club or affinity group, Rob trusted you to go into the woods and all around the school so you could take that perfect picture. You collected books, clothes, and food to donate to others. Your team made it to the world's robotic competition with Larry the Lawnmower. You realized that finding friends was a lot easier than finding classrooms by their numbers. You learned your forensics pieces and you placed high in those competitions. You figured out how to study. You learned a language, and you got good grades. You successfully negotiated a peace treaty with other nations during Model UN. You found your sport, and you made varsity. You acted in a play, and learned to play Mario Kart, ping pong, and chess in the senior forum. You found answers. As a class, you've experienced so much, some negatives, but some positives. You've had to wear a mask and not see classmates or have sleepovers because of COVID. You experienced hybrid learning with teachers constantly coaxing you, please put your cameras on, while your pets tried to make a special guest appearance on screen. And as you hoped, no one noticed you in your fuzzy pajamas. You recognized the importance of helping others and easily exceeded the required number of service hours. You were the first ninth grade orientation fresh class. Your comments helped shape that program into the success that it is today. You've experienced a few daily schedules. Some included XYZ days. You remember when Ms. Kokulski was known as Mishima. You've been through a few lunch options, Polo Cafe being one of them. And although we miss those great chocolate chip cookies, Oh, I can still smell that gooey goodness. We thank Francine and the Plum Market crew for now providing delicious and plentiful lunches. You were the first class in many years to not experience the Detroit River up close during our service day. <laughs> and I personally want to thank you for that. <laughs> but as a class, you've also experienced the loss of a few beloved teachers and staff. But you persevered. You kept asking questions and searching for those answers. And now, as you prepare for your futures outside of Green Hill's white cemented blocked walls, the 310 parking lot chapbook jams, 
and what seems like a hundred windows, some of which a few of you have used as exits from the forums, and I know who you are, but I won't say. You've checked in and out with School Pass for the last time, said goodbye to your sixth grade buddies, and submitted that last English paper on Griffin, or Griffon, and you're ready to leave us to continue asking those questions and seeking those answers elsewhere. But before you go, I'd like to give you just a few parting words of a wisdom, or at least some advice from a slightly older and hopefully wiser person. Have empathy. Exercise that ability daily to understand someone else's feelings and perspectives, and to use that understanding to guide your own actions. Be bold. Safe, but bold. Attend a show that you wouldn't normally attend. Eat something different. Read books. Find a new hobby. Continue being of service to others. Try new experiences. Travel. Meet new people. Join groups. Join marches. Join protests. See challenges as opportunities. Learn to dance. Create art. Practice your listening skills. Recognize your privilege. Form your own opinions. Vote. When you say you're sorry, and you should, you should mean it and show it. Make new traditions. Express gratitude. And tell the people closest to you that you love them. And tell them often. Understand you will make mistakes. Sometimes you won't be able to find those answers. And that's OK. You can always start again by asking a different question. Learn from your mistakes and be a better person for them. We, the faculty and staff of Green Hills, have tried to prepare you to be curious, creative, and responsible citizens. Now it's your turn to demonstrate that that's what you are. And how can you do this? by continuing to ask those questions and seek out those answers. Thank you. Thank you, Nadine. Since our founding 55 years ago, there have been several seedings of a school song, two during my 11 years as head of school, and it's no surprise that Ben Cohen is responsible for the one that took root three years ago. As he and I imagined, the anthem sprouted during school meetings, out of athletic team buses, and across the so important rituals of our school. The pandemic paused its growth, but future generations of Green Hill students owe the class of 2022 for caring for and institutionalizing it, as we will do now at commencement. The words and music are in your program, so please everyone stand and join in the singing of the Green Hills, of the Green Hills anthem led by our upper school choir. <laughs> I see our graduates don't have programs, so you're really on the spot as to whether everything I just said is true.
Well, we didn't even practice that part. It's, it's, it's great. Um, it's hard to sing along to that, isn't it? It's beautiful. Thank you. And now for why we are here. I ask associate head and head of upper school Quincy McLaughlin to the lectern for the awarding of diplomas with the assistance of Dean of Students Tom Ward and Vice President of the Board of Trustees Netta Mirav Sali Ryan, class of 2003. And joining us on the dais also is Andy Wicklin, our senior class dean. Luke William Avery. Elizabeth Claire Ballard. Monica Shaley Behrend. Ian Alexander Benson. Luca Karam Bachachian. Georgina Luann Brandenburg Branch. Bo Henry Brewer. Tina Wu Chow. Kira Beth Christensen. Caden Edward Kumagai Couch. Sophia Ignacia Chazer Hoyle. Riley Joseph Day. Madison Taylor DeWalt. Mia Juen Englesby. Danielle Ruth Ewang. Peyton Juliet Feeney. <laughs> Trevor Dolby Finnegan. Ryder Maccabee Freed. Kylas Leighton Gallimore. Kenya Ashley Hall. Robin Bajer Holland. Zara Ibrahim. Usman Adil Iqbal. Jinyi G. Sydney Michelle Jones.
stuff. Donovan Zion Correga. Ryan Gargis Kirsten. Lucienne Fraser Canard. Gabriella Marie Kinnick. Finnegan Keaton Klein. Lana Coatley. Jeremy Stephen Kovacs. Brianna Nicole Kowalczyk. Tianzi Lee. Shan Lu. Sabine Malik. <laughs> Ahmad, Ahmad Malik. Avni Madhu Mangrulkar. <laughs> Jose Luis Martin Dino. <laughs> Yassine Hosam Adin Mahmoud Metwali. Cameron Montgomery Miller. <laughs> Jacob Daniel Minor. <laughs> Manali Lona Modi. Sophia Cecilia Moya. <laughs> Rukmini Kumari Nalamathu. <laughs> Cameron Henry Nickel. Lauren Jennifer Nishi. Isha Nyati. Mert Hakan Oral. Nicola Pasquariello.
Lindsay Marie Peck. Aaron Peng. Jacob Thorpe Perlman. Kale Colin Piedmont Lang. Abigail Grace Quint. Sarah Robinson. Madeline Grace Rogers. <laughs> Dylan Gregory Ruland. <laughs> Simran Kaur Sahota. Gia Sandu. Juliana Nicole Schroeder. Anya Seth. Samara Kareem Siddiqui. Peter Nicholas Serini. Claire Jurgens Stevens. Anna Maria Stoffel. <laughs> Julian Chandler Toogood. <laughs> Alexandria Sophia Van Swernigan. and Joseph Van Swernigan. <laughs> Connor Fisher Walsh. <laughs> Ryan Purantang Wang. Chase Carter Williams. <laughs> Justin Edward Yu. <laughs> Sonia Maria Zaharik. Anna Caroline Zell. Congratulations on behalf of my colleagues, the entire Green Hills community, and 50 years of Green Hills graduates. 
Welcome to the Alumni Association. I present to you the graduates of Green Hill School, class of 2022. Thank you all for sharing this marvelous occasion with us. Have a great rest of your afternoon.